everybody, Dr. Sean. I'm a health and performance optimizer physician. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about the microbiome and vulnerability to a particular disease, in this case, HIV. But if the microbiome is implicated in the potential acquisition of HIV, it's a fair question to ask what other medical conditions or infectious processes could the microbiome be implicated and I'm going to say probably a lot. This is an interesting study, albeit a small one, where they looked at a group of men in this particular case who were susceptible to HIV. Uh, these were individuals that were prior to becoming infected, they did microbiome analysis on their stool and they looked at the different groups of people and they found that the men who acquired HIV and ended up becoming infected had a lower species of uh, a particular type of uh, bacteria called Bacteroides. And the ones that didn't become infected involved in the same kind of um, activity, which is uh, uh, in this particular case and study, they were looking at individuals who were men who were having sex with other men, which predisposed them to having HIV. In this particular case, the individuals at higher levels of Bacteroides were protected against uh, and did not get HIV. <clears throat> so Bacteroides is associated with a type of flora, a species of microbes uh, that's typically associated with leaner, thinner builds. And individuals that have more firmicutes, we look at the ratio roughly between firmicutes and Bacteroides, tend to be uh, a type of uh, bacteria uh, that's found more in uh, heavier set people. So uh, individuals are more obese and it tends to have a slightly more inflammatory character with it. Now, when it comes to the microbiome, there are no hard, fast rules. So things uh, aren't really clear cut. But Bacteroides generally are a species of microbes, a classification of microbes that uh, is more common in individuals that eat uh, meat, particularly red meat and dairy. And, um, and so you can, you can see a higher level of that. And also people who, um, who eliminate or have lower levels of chlorine and less uh, food preservatives and things. So um, there's a lot, you can just Google Bacteroides and uh, learn about them and Firmicutes. And in this particular study, <clears throat> you screen shoot that, you'll be able to read a pretty decent article in uh, a, ma a uh, not a magazine, but an online website that I like, sciencedaily.com. And all, you know, every day they are publishing good content to take a look at. You just scroll through and get it. Or you can just watch my videos because I get a lot of concepts out of it. And I thought this was an important one because uh, when I went to medical school, uh, we learned this adage, no HIV, no medicine. There's so much about HIV that you learn a lot about medicine. So HIV is an interesting um, disease infection to, to study and learn about when you're in medical school. And of course, we continue to learn about it as physicians. So um, the take home point in this was um, the type of microbiome you have can predispose you to susceptibility or in the alternative protect you. So <clears throat> if you're an at-risk population for having HIV, uh, such as intravenous drug users, or you may <clears throat> may in fact be, um, although the study didn't look at <clears throat> healthcare workers who get maybe a needle infections or potentially at risk. In this particular case, it's men who were, were having sex with other men that were predisposed to get HIV and the, um, the presence of the microbiome uh, either contributed to or uh, helped prevent getting uh, HIV. So uh, a, the study you can actually pull up <clears throat> and take a look at here, screen shoot it and read it yourself. I like to tell people because a lot of my followers are not scientists, they're not physicians, they're not researchers. And so reading the study may be of limited value to you. But for those of you who are uh, scientific and you want to prefer, you prefer to look at the study itself as opposed to an article written about the study, then here is that citation so you can take a look at it. <clears throat> now, this is a pretty decent um, uh, uh, article, a journal article that you can read about uh, the relationship between Firmicutes and Bacteroides. 
Again, this classification kind of roughly divides, it's, uh, divides up 90% of your microbiome roughly falls into uh, this classification of firm, firm acutes to bacteroides. And depending on how you eat, how you live, uh, changes that ratio. So you may want to screenshot this uh, citation, pull it up and read it. It's a good primer. I enjoyed it. And I thought for my followers who watch me, this would be is some good content. Now, uh, something interesting if you're interested in getting your microbiome sequenced, um, then you may want to consider uh, doing a uh, microbiome analysis through the American Gut Project. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, they have temporarily suspended their analysis unless it suddenly come back up because of COVID. So uh, they're serious researchers. Uh, there's a researcher out there, Dr. Knight, he's one of my favorites, who really is... Um, is, is one of the most renowned authorities when it comes to the microbiome. And his lab uh, offers this service uh, to individuals who basically want to be citizen scientists and contribute to the body of knowledge uh, when it comes to the microbiome. And so as a, uh, as a result, you can submit a portion of your, uh, your microbiome, or it's really it's just you, you wipe on a Q-tip um, use toilet paper that's toilet paper that has been wiped on your bottom on your anus after you have a bowel movement you get a little bit of that feces and it goes into a uh, small vial and they will analyze your fecal uh, microbiome sample and do an analysis a very interesting analysis and compare you to a lot of things so um, i thought it would be kind of fun just to to pull this up and take a look at that a little bit more Again, this is called the American Gut Project. And let me just reduce a little bit. I am dyslexic, so am I going the right way? Oh, going the wrong way. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. So the American Gut Project, you can just Google it and find it. And when they go back into um, offering the service, you may, may be able to look at that. So this, uh, whoop, let me try to pull this down a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um, whoop, now you can't see it at all. Yeah. Can you tell I'm a one-man band? <laughs> okay. So um, the uh, red in this particular case is firmicutes, and the orange is bacteroides. So you can get an idea from looking at your particular sample. They'll make comparison to uh, your sample when it comes to, uh, they make a comparison of your sample to Michael Pollan. Michael Pollan is a, uh, best-selling New York Times author, uh, scientist, and uh, knows a lot about the microbiome, so they make comparison to him because he he participated in the American Gut Project. And so you can see his firmicutes, his bacteroides, <clears throat> and also they make a comparison of your sample to somebody a similar age. So you'll your sample will be compared to somebody else in a similar age, and then somebody with a a similar a similar body mass index. So, you know, heavy set people, uh, obese people, thin people, you want to try to make a comparison to somebody roughly with your body mass index, that information is provided to you. And then somebody of the same gender. So uh, somebody who's, you know, male or male or female and somebody of a similar diet. So depending on, what, you know, they ask you a lot of questions. So you may be a vegan, you may be vegetarian, you may eat the Mediterranean diet, you may eat paleo, keto, carnivore, uh, standard American diet, whatever it is, and they'll make a comparison to you. And uh, and then the average average specimen, they do an overall average with those people. Now, if you can see, what's kind of interesting is across the board, bacteroides and firmicutes are pre pretty close. You know, those that line right there, uh, but you come down this one specimen here, and look how small the firmicutes are and how big the bacteroides in this one particular uh, category. So uh, what is that category? Who was that person that had really large amount of bacter bacteroides? One of the advantages of bacteroides, again, no hard, fast rule, is it tends to be found in people that are lean and who uh, one of the benefits is that you don't end up consuming a lot of extra calories. So you tend up tend to stay lean. So for that standpoint, um, it has some benefit 
uh, some desirable benefit to helping you stay more lean. So the individual here's sample uh, is is really off the charts, significant difference in bacteria's from cruise was yours truly. I'm not bragging about me. I am touting the things that I did. Now, what did I do? I absolutely cut out all chlorinated water. Okay, I do not drink chlorinated water. I do not consume chlorinated water. Um, I, I, I've been in desert settings and I've turned down water <laughs> uh, to avoid getting chlorine. I've had to pray <laughs> to bring, get me water to get exposure because I was would not drink chlorinated water. So I, I go to great lengths to avoid chlorinated water. I, I am a very diligent about avoiding food preservatives or anything not to disrupt my microbiome. I eat a lot of meat. I'm carnivore and I eat a, a large amount of meat and I eat fermented vegetables. So I'm constantly enriching my microbiome. And I think it's an option you ought to consider. It's kind of the best of both worlds. I'm carnivore and I'm also, um, I do eat vegetation, but I am cognizant and concerned about the poten potential concerns that are being articulated and discussed and increasingly becoming, I think, um, better understood, more commonplace about plant defects, defenses, oxalates and lectins and um, uh, phytates and, and, and other uh, things that are, are, are present in plants that may interfere with our nutrition and may be problematic, not so much for, you know, uh, an acute, uh, you know, consumption, but over a period of time. So um, I offer those uh, suggestions to you. Uh, I, I covered previously this uh, particular article here that also has some interesting discussions, points about diet. So I think these are worthwhile taking. So uh, consider getting your own microbiome analysis done on the, uh, when it comes to the American Gut Project. Uh, I'm very pleased that my bacteroides is so off the chart high and my firm acutes are lower. lower. Uh, I no longer stronger w with ob obesity and being heavy. I formerly did, and uh, I'm super excited that um, I, I appear to be heading towards a good microbiome. So uh, uh, I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, give it a like. I really need to try to share my content more with other people. I do this because my passion is trying to reverse chronic disease and to share content that help pe helps people to do that. So that's, that's, I rely on you forwarding and sharing this with other people, giving it likes, uh, subscribing to my channel so you can get other content. And uh, please, please give it a like and please share it with other people. I think more people, hey, listen, if you care about anybody, send them this video about the microbiome. And this is an interesting one. And if you know people that are um, uh, who are at risk for HIV, you should uh, pass this along to them so that they're aware that uh, depending on their microbiome, they can either reduce their risk or potentially increase their risk through um, you know, their microbiome and how they live. So, okay, uh, we will see you again on another interesting video down the road. Dr. Sean out.